All right, let's dive into one of the biggest debates in modern software, Rust versus Go. Now, these aren't just programming languages. Nope, they represent two completely different philosophies for building the software that literally runs our world. So which path on? You know, for the longest time, if you wanted to write fast software, especially with lots of things happening all at once, you were basically playing with fire. It was this constant tightrope walk between performance and, well, total chaos. One tiny mistake could unleash these nightmare bugs that were almost impossible to track down. And the main villain in this whole story? The data race. Just picture it. You've got two parts of your program trying to write to the exact same place in memory at the exact same time. What you get is pure, unpredictable chaos. Corrupted data, random system crashes. It's the kind of thing that gives developers nightmares for a reason. But what if we didn't have to make that awful trade-off anymore? What if you could actually have speed and safety? Well, two modern languages have come along, and each one offers a totally unique, really powerful solution to this age-old problem. So first up, let's talk about Rust. Rust takes the approach of a super strict but really powerful guardian. Its entire philosophy is built around one thing, preventing errors before they can ever, ever happen. The core idea behind Rust is, well, it's pretty profound. It's this idea that you should pay the price for safety up front. What that means is all the hard work happens when you're writing and compiling the code. The language forces you to follow this incredibly strict set of rules to guarantee your program is safe before it even gets a chance to run. And the magic behind this whole thing is Rust's unique ownership model. It's just a brilliant system. Here's how it works. First, every single piece of data has one clear owner. No confusion. Second, other parts of your code can borrow that data, but only under really strict conditions that prevent chaos. And finally, when the owner is done with the data, it's automatically cleaned up. This simple idea makes huge categories of bugs, like data races, literally impossible to write. So who enforces all these rules? That would be the legendary borrow checker. Seriously, you can think of it like a super vigilant compiler cop that patrols your code. It checks every single line to make sure you're following the rules of ownership and borrowing. And if it spots a potential problem, wham, it stops the build right in its tracks. No exceptions. And get this, developers absolutely love this. For eight years running, Rust has been voted the most admired programming language out there. That tells you something, right? It shows that the upfront struggle is a price developers are more than happy to pay for the kind of guarantees Rust gives them. Okay, now let's do a complete 180 and look at a totally different philosophy. Meet Go, the pragmatic orchestrator. If Rust is all about getting perfection at compile time, Go is all about making the developer's life as simple as possible. Go's philosophy just flips the old way of thinking completely on its head. Its motto is so simple and elegant. Don't communicate by sharing memory. Instead, share memory by communicating. So instead of having different parts of your program fight over the same piece of data, Go just says, hey, why don't you just pass the data between them? And the way Go does this is with something called Go routines. Now, these are not your dad's old heavy computer threads. They are incredibly lightweight. I'm talking starting up in microseconds. You can spin up hundreds of thousands of them without breaking a sweat, which makes writing concurrent code feel, well, almost easy and natural. Okay, so you've got hundreds of thousands of these Go routines flying around. How do you stop them from crashing into each other and causing data races? The answer is channels. You can literally picture them as these safe pipelines. One Go routine sends a piece of data into the channel, and another one receives it safely at the other end. No collisions, no mess. So we have two brilliant but very, very different approaches to the same problem. And listen, this isn't about which one is better. It's about understanding the trade-offs. It's about knowing which philosophy actually fits what you're trying to do. And this right here, this visual, perfectly illustrates one of the biggest trade-offs, the learning curve. Learning Go is often described like a walk up a gentle hill. It's simple, it's straightforward. Learning Rust, on the other hand, well, that's like climbing a steep, jagged mountain. Mastering concepts like the borrow checker takes real, dedicated effort. This table really brings the choice into sharp focus. With Rust, your safety is literally guaranteed by the compiler. With Go, that safety is managed by the developer using much simpler tools. This means Rust gives you this maximum zero-cost control over performance, which is perfect for things like systems programming or game engines. 
Go gives you excellent performance with way less complexity, which is exactly why it dominates in cloud services and APIs. Now, here's where it gets really fascinating. Recent surveys show that almost one in six Go developers are thinking about adopting Rust. This kind of suggests what some people call a graduation path. Developers start out by mastering concurrency on Go's gentle hill, and then they look towards Rust's steep mountain for their next big challenge, searching for that next level of control and performance. So what's the big takeaway from all this? Well, it all boils down to that classic engineering principle. You got to use the right tool for the right job. Look, the rise of both Rust and Go is a huge deal. It signals a major shift in the software industry towards building more reliable, safer software. But if you get caught up in a Rust versus Go shouting match, you're kind of missing the bigger picture. The real choice isn't the language itself. It's the philosophy behind it. Do you need the ironclad, guaranteed safety that Rust provides, even if it costs you more time up front? Or does your project value the runtime simplicity and incredible development speed that Go offers? The mark of a truly great engineer isn't being a fan of just one tool. It's understanding which philosophy, which tool from the workbench, is the right one to solve the problem sitting right in front of them. So the real question I have for you is, what problem are you going to solve next?